guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. I saw you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards, Aiden's Path. Y'all really enjoyed that last episode, and so did I. Well, I had to do a little bit of editing for that. <laughs> oh, that game got spicy. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. He's playing us all. I hope Hema writes you a bad report. Uh, bye, guys. Dallin disappears around the corner, takes raging fists and a swinging tail being the last parts of them I saw. Finally, some peace and quiet. He looks satisfied. Maybe he was so calm all this time because he knew he'll get rid of those two. Just plotting and scheming all the way here. Scary. Now, shall we get going? He holds the door he holds the door open for me. Ooh, little gentleman. I happily pass the threshold. I am now inside the Slayer's main room, which looked old fashioned but still welcoming. There were a lot of other furs here, of course. Many of them looked towards us, considering that their vice leader just entered. You're popular. You can say that. We walk past everyone as I shyly wave at the people that greet me along the way. <laughs> Rawr. Did someone just say rawr at me? Oh my god. Another person gives me a wink and a toothy smile. I try not to look... I try not to look away from Aiden as more people either have a lustful gaze on them or lightly sweat with worry and anticipation, both actions being very strange to me. At the back of the room, there's another door leading to a smaller space. It has one office desk full of papers, some cabinets, and a big window in front of which stands a person. Could this be the person Tate mentioned before being picked up? What's their name again? Oh, hello. Greetings, Hema. Don't even try, Kiriman. Hema disappears and reappears in front of Aiden. It was not a teleportation spell. The speed at which they moved made papers fly everywhere. They aimed their black bandaged hand at Aiden's, he at Aiden's head and struck with enough force to create a small air current. Call small air current around. Aiden moved his head to the side, dodging the claw-like hand without changing his expression. A fur on the side of his face saw its life flash before its eyes. Is this something normal? Hema takes a step back after the failed murder attempt. What's your excuse this time? Don't have one. But my paperwork is completed. He reaches out his hand and pulls out a stack of papers out of nowhere. Whoa! Dimensional pocket. I need to learn to do that so I don't have to carry around a bag all day. And I have ex an extra applicant in here, too. This is Travis. He gets behind me and holds my shoulders. Our new member. He sounds proud. Hema sits down and goes through his papers one by one. I remember, I remember him from the meeting. And why does he so desperately need to be presented to me personally? In my office? Being selected does not come with extra benefits. At least not in my eyes. I just need some information. Um, about my room? Right. Guess I can help with that. So what? Did you sleep outside yesterday? Are we gonna have another troublemaking cat at the school? One hobo is quite enough, I'd say. I heard he'd managed to score detention before school even started. Aiden squeezes my shoulders. He stayed with me. So that's the reason you disappeared. Too busy banging. <laughs> you should let the first years breathe at least a day. I know you can be desperate sometimes, but still. Besides, Monty's been looking to grab your tail for a while now. And you... Alright, that's enough. Clearly you've been drinking. Don't listen to them, Travis. He grabs my hand. Come on, we'll get the info from Marina or Dallin. <laughs> Relax, Aiden, I'm just teasing. You know I don't drink. At least not when I work. Don't deny that you deserved it. Just because your paperwork is flawless somehow, that doesn't mean you get to skip shard discussions. <sighs> I know, I'll be there next time, I promise. We'll see about that. Now, let's see your room, little guy. Name? Uh, it's Travis. Yeah, we all know that verbatim by now. The headmaster sure likes his little prodigies. What about family name? Oof, I didn't choose one yet. What was that? I, I mean, my family name is... White. Travis White. Son of Walter White. <laughs> Actually, let me get some water, y'all. Oh, there we go. Oh, delicious water. Okay. All right, let's see here. They're searching through computer documents, it seems. Good to know technology is not doomed without internet. Travis White, room 72. The building is the same as Aiden, so you must be familiar. That's two levels above mine. And here is your key pass. They hand me a card that I'm supposed to swipe at the door. Thank you so much. Uh, you were a great help. Don't mention it. I'm assuming if you didn't have your room key, you don't have the lunch card. I... 
don't even know what that is. They glare at Aiden. Yeah, I forgot about that one. I don't usually use it. Here, contrary to the name, this is valid for both lunch and dinner, just not breakfast. It might be the most important meal of the day, but it's also the one seventy-five percent. The one seventy-five percent of students here skip. I'll keep that in mind. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Are we free to go now? They take one more look at Aiden's paperwork and sigh. It pisses me off that I don't have a reason to say no. So I suppose you're free, but you'll have the responsibility of watching and probing the first years in practice. Understood. Let's go. Bye, Hema. Thanks again. See ya. See ya. On our way back to the door, even more furs were staring at Aiden wide-eyed. Some looked scared. Some relieved. Hema's a scary person. As soon as we close the door behind us, Aiden lets out a big breath of relief. And who can blame him? He almost got a new hole in his face. He's also shaking. He's clenching his teeth and frowning? He does not look well. Is he angry? Hey, Aiden? Are you okay? I'm fine. I just need a minute. Excuse me. He hurries off around the corner. And I'm alone. Superb. Man, he must have, he must have got to his nerves. Let's see. It's 9 a.m. There are three more hours until practice starts. I could head there right now. To the arena. I could try to find Aiden. Or just stay here, wait for him to come back and converse with the demon in my head. You called? Not yet. I need to decide. What should I do? Wait for Aiden inside. I sat down and waited. Furs glance at me from time to time. I see some of them try to approach me, but they all start sweating and change their mind fast. Jeez, is that what being friends with Aiden does? Maybe it's because you're out of their league. You think so? And ten other hilarious jokes you can tell yourself. Of course. The door to Hama's office opens, and now there is a new shortest person in the room. Seeing everyone so stressed out around Hama is quite funny. Oh, they have proven not proven otherwise. They step in the room, and then the noise quiets down. Not completely, but noticeable. They look around until their gaze locks on me. They look surprised to see me, and makes their way over to my corner. Hey, new guy. Let me guess, Aiden ditched you? We can say that, although it was more like a panic attack from his part. Say no more. Hama sat in the chair in front of me. One of the Shard members bought us both drinks at, the at that very moment. Uh, root beer? Kavas. We make it ourselves. You know, when Aiden first became my vice, he was very reliable. And he'd say, and he'd stay beside me like a shadow. Now he brings me his assigned paperwork and disappears. I have no idea when he gets the time. He was always practicing, studying, or partying. I wish I had his time. Does being a Shard leader come with any benefits? Sounds like a stressful position. It does. First of all, we get paid. Vice leaders, too. Secondly, although we still have to partake in annual tests, we won't be expelled for failing. And a ton of extra credits. Sounds like a decent deal. How does one become a leader in the first place? Heh. <laughs> Why? Looking to take my job? No, no, I could never. I'm joking. Not like you could, but by the way, but, but, but the way to the top is easy. Be the best and crush everyone else. Sounds simple enough. Hema takes a sip of their drink. Hey, can I ask a favor? Uh, sure. Anything. Can you keep an eye on Aiden for me? Like, spy on him? No, I just want to know what distracts him so. I bet it worries you too. So if you find out for yourself, come tell me as well, will you? I find myself trusting the small person. I sure hope they can't read my mind. Is worry the only reason behind this? You're a sharp one. I suppose I can't hide it that well, so I'll be straight with you. I'm jealous. J jealous? Yes. I, too, have a personal life. I, too, want to not be stuck in my office with a stack of papers on the second day of school. I don't know how he does it, but I want to know. You can sympathize with that, right? So please, do it for me. I can understand that. All right, I'll help you. Good choice. They gulp down the rest of the drink and smack the mug on the table with a thud. I hope to see you again. You don't seem too bad, and I noticed a lot of Shard members already have an eye out for you. For one reason or the other... So try not to deviate from your main path, all right? Understood. You should get going. Practice is starting soon. Should I go now? Uh, all right. Bye. You little ho. I don't know. She's cute. Uh, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I'm not sure. Um. Might also. What else might be trans? Uh, might be effeminate male. Might be female. I don't know. Um. I think they are. I don't know if it was ever specifically mentioned if Hema is uh, what Hema's uh, sex or gender is. So 
So it's probably just ambiguous, probably just up in the air for people to guess. So, yeah, cool. Still a cutie. Still very cute. Don't touch the hand. <laughs> uh, all right, bye. Uh, I'm going to stay with you. Soon? Don't you mean in over three hours? Three hours? With you wasting two, my time in there, it felt like it would... With you wasting, with you two wasting my time in there, it felt like it we, I feel like we would miss practice altogether. Nice try. You know what they say, time moves faster when you have fun. They do say that, but time seemed to move slower for me, so it's kind of the opposite. Oh, scratch that then. You were close to something. Almost had a joke. You should leave the humor to the experts. And those are? Anyone but you. Speaking of, our, of your unfunny jokes, before you comment, I have to say that you do have a useful quality that can help us right now. I'm listening. I want to know more about that curse of theirs. Use your body to sway them into revealing all their secrets to you. Yeah, I don't think I'll do that. What? Why not? Because it's not important, Scribbles. If I get the chance, I might ask. But I won't seduce them into telling me. Oh, I was not referring to seduction. I doubt you can seduce a clam. Maybe a very self-conscious clam with mommy issues. I'll go there and talk to them. Maybe score a date or whatever you call it nowadays. Hayma is looking at me bored, ready to leave any second. Hey, do you have any work or plans until practice? Not really. I woke up early and overestimated the amount of stuff I have to do. So now I'm free. I was going to browse the market for... things. Do you mind if I tag along? I'm not really familiar with the Academy's campus infrastructure. You want to play... you want me to play nanny for you, White? Um, I was thinking more like a guide? A slightly higher play, paid job, lucky me. But fine. Come. Just don't get too close. Curse and all that. Gotcha! Oh, God. We walk outside. I keep my distance of about five feet behind them. Hmm. Let's think this one through. What small talk can you make with a very important, somewhat aggressive, below-average height person? Hey, Hema? Sup? What made you become a hunter? Well, it's a little early to call myself that, even if it is my last year here. You think there's a chance you won't graduate? I find that hard to believe. The new headmaster is nuts. Who knows what stupid rules that new test might have. Maybe I'll find out that cursed people are not allowed to participate. Wouldn't that be a hit in the knee? Oh, but don't tell him I said that. Or your boyfriend. But boyfriend You mean Aiden? One second, y'all. Water. Ah, yes. There we go. We're not, um, together or anything. Really? I swear I felt something there. Not even a crush. Can we please change the subject? Fine, lover boy. Phew. That was a close call. They almost thought you were oh, they almost thought you weren't a complete loser. You will be impressed by my grand master plan when you see it. Doubt it. How big is this market? It stretches out for a couple of streets, even more on weekends. Whoa! Do they try to get every do they try do they get to sell everything in stock? I don't know. It's not my business. You can ask people yourself when we get there. We arrive at the market a minute later. The streets are lively, full of both students and regular people as well as tourists. The bright sun hits the fabric of the tents and the makeshift rooftops, casting both shadow and coloring the sunlight both casting both shadow and coloring the sunlight red, yellow, blue, and many more. I look around at everything I can put my eyes on, almost bumping into people at times. I wonder if any of them are teachers. Unfortunately I don't know what I don't know what they what they look like. I haven't met any yet. When I thought of an academy market, I mostly expected school supplies. Some magical weapons and artifacts, maybe that maybe in another everyday objects. Uh, sorry, y'all. But the variety was almost overwhelming. There are booths with street food. As soon as we walked closer, the different aromas hit me like a truck. In a good way. Tents of herbs, spices, dried meat, fruit, and vegetables surrounding these booths. Just a little further were small indoor shops of magical items. Scraps of metal, wood, and other materials for any do-it-yourself do project you might have. Clothes everywhere, as well as people at every corner offering different services. Gardeners, hairdressers, cleaners, and especially escorts that didn't hesitate to wink at and urge over anyone that glanced their way. Hayma had to grab my hand multiple times to drag me along. Not because I was horny or anything. I just don't know how to say no. The market extended on multiple streets, and each one had something that Hayma was very interested in. Tents and shops that look a lot like tourist attractions. These guys sell a bit of everything and anything. You just have to know how to ask. Uh, so what are you looking for? As I said, just browsing. Killing time. Have you ever killed someone? Hmm? You said something. No, 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 nothing at all. You sure? Because I swear I heard... Oh, look! That woman sells hats! Let's check it out! I really don't care about... Wait, those are actually pretty cool. Wait up! 
Oh! That is a very large breasted woman. <laughs> I run to a nearby tent. It was another random object vendor, but it just so happened that she was selling some magical hats or she was advertising them. The vendor was a nice gypsy woman that was amused and happy by our excitement for hats, even if I was mostly using it as a cover-up for my out loud thinking. Have you ever killed someone? Smooth. Shut up! I know! Good lord, she got them big old tatas. Jesus. Hey there, younglings. I see you get an eye out for fashion. Can't blame ya. I was feeling a little self-conscious about my culture's way of dressing before moving here. Then I saw what the students here are usually wearing, and well, let's just say my confidence is through the roof. Everyone could use some nice silk and accessories to cover their fur a little more. So, say, what can I help you with? Other than hats, that is. Your fella here seems to have that under control. Indeed, Hamlet was ignoring everything that wasn't a hat. Oh, fella. Okay, so... Male. Okay. Very, very feminine, cute male. Jeez. Oof. Hot. They found one They found one with a big with a big feather on it and a lot of shade. It's a little odd, but cute. Uh, hi! We're just browsing the market. It's my first time in this place, so my friend here is showing me around. Ah, first year, eh? I'ma be honest. I'm not totally sure what the deal is with that academy, but I'm just here to sell my goods. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!